All right, guys, so we just finished up case two, and we're going to work on case three, chapter eight. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our company name to, and the computer's being slow again, no cap lock, case three, student name, and save. All right, once we have that done, click on done at the bottom right. We are going to be able to start with number one. Number one says, add the following bill and product received from Samsung Incorporated on 130 2020 Add the following bill. So to go to a bill, we're going to go to create bill. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bender is going to be Samsung Inc. Drop down menu. Samsung Inc. And the date is 1-30-20. Term is net 15. It's already set there. Receive five Samsung Galaxy 8. So I'm going to click on Samsung Galaxy 8. That's the account item details. Samsung Galaxy 8. So that's a very important um, thing. I'm not just billing something to an account. I'm actually adding items or inventory. So that's why I went down here instead of up here. So Samsung Galaxy 8. And I have five of those. And then the second product was eight Samsung Note phones. So Samsung Note. Looking for Samsung Note. And I'm purchasing eight of those. Awesome. I'm wondering why tax is not being added to this. This is 2020. It should be taxable. I guess I'm not charging. I guess I'm buying. And when I'm buying, I don't necessarily need to pay tax because I'm going to be um, redoing it. Up, oh, I got a phone call. Let me pause this for a second. All right. Um, so where were we? We created the bill. Oh, need a safe. Let's see if there's a bill number. Nope, no bill number. Two devices. I want to click save. Save some bill. And moving on to number two. Number two says add an invoice for 130 to 20. A new taxable customer. So I'm going to exit this. I'm going to go to create invoice. It's a new customer. Diamond Girl. So add new customer name. Diamond Girl. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Terms is net 30. Save that. Terms net 30. The date's 13020. Four Samsung Galaxy 8s. So Samsung Galaxy 8s for those and five Samsung Notes. So we'll go to Samsung Notes. Five of those, not 51, five. Six hours of phone consulting. So I'm going to go to phone consulting, and this is six hours. Now, so number, keep in mind, your first two products should be taxable, but your service is not taxable. When everything's said and done, I'm going to click save. Invoice is saved. I move on to number three. It says add a payment received from GHO Marketing. So I'm going to exit out of that, create a 
payment, receive payment. GHO marketing, customer, GHO marketing. And right here's the outstanding invoice we have. Is that it? 2110 or 2610? That could be it. And it's off because of the taxes. So keep this in mind. Deposited the same day into the checking account. Add a payment for 131. So I'm going to change this date to 131. All right. It doesn't say how they paid. So let's just put check. I'm going to add a reference number for the fun of it. One, two, three, four, five. And it says that it was deposited into the checking account the same day. So I'm going to change the deposit to to checking account three. Big difference here, right? If you do it to und undeposited, right, then it's not going to go into the bank. This will go into the bank and it will directly affect checking account three. So it says it was deposited the same day into the bank, into the checking account. So I'm going to click on this invoice. Even though it's not the same number that it shows, I'm going to click Save and New. This means when I try to reconcile this, this is going to be off a little bit. Add the following budget. So it wants us to start creating a budget now. All right, so I'm going to exit out of that. Go to the gear icon, budgeting. Add a budget. Change this budget name to budget three. It probably tells you to call it budget one. Nope, it says use budget two as the budget name, which is really funny because we use budget one twice and then just budget two. Um, so we're calling it budget three so that we know it's for case three. I don't want to get confused later on. You guys can call it whatever you want to though. Intervals monthly, don't pre-field data, and don't subdivide. Make sure that's still the same. Monthly budget. Yep, it's giving us information already. So I'm going to go to next. And sales of product income is 20000 Sales of product income... 20,000. Service is 1,000. Okay. Cost of goods sold is 10,000. Cost of goods sold, 10,000. Advertising, advertising is 1,000. Insurance is 500. Interest expense is three fifty. Meals and entertainment two fifty. Keep scrolling down. Payroll is seven thousand. Payroll case three. Amounts provided should be input for each month in twenty twenty. Use budget two as the budget name. We changed that to budget three. So now we should be good to save. Creating customized budget overview report. And it just wants us to create the, the customized budget overview report. And it tells us to, um, to save it and stuff like that. But we're not going to because we're not going to be printing it off. The last thing we need to do is reconcile this company. I hit save, didn't I? All right. So I'm going to exit. So the next thing we need to do is reconcile your company's checking account. No service charges were incurred or interest earned. The ending bank statement balance on 131 was 51771. So I'm going to go to the gear icon and click reconcile. I'm going to reconcile checking account three. My ending balance, and this is something that I'm going to have to adjust, 51771.07. And my ending balance date is 131 of 20. No charges. Now notice this number is going to have to be changed to make me balance. Start reconcile. Start reconciliation is the proper terminology. But 
Number eight says, after a review of the company's most recent statements and a comparison with the company's checking account, you note that one check and one deposit were not recorded in the checking account. <laughs> in the checking account and did not appear on the bank statement. Please check next to all the checks and payments except for check 329 to Jedi. 329 for Jedi. Right here. This one's not going to get a check mark. And the deposit for 2160. So these two. Now, because I'm not checking that one that we just deposited, I might not have to go back through and adjust it. Nope, I do. And I have to adjust it because this is going to be the difference in the taxes. So anytime we deposited things in here, the, the, the deposit might not have been the right amount because we didn't charge the 10% taxes that the book said to charge because we charged the taxes based on the state and what they were at that time, which two, day, two years later from the book, it's lower. So we're off 101.25. Now to get our things to balance, we need to edit this info and we need to take the 101.25 off of this. So if I'm going to use a calculator, and I'm going to take the 51,771.07 and subtract the 101.25, and I get 51669.2, and I'm going to click Save. Once I do that, my difference goes to zero and I can reconcile. This is how you should be adjusting it based on the fact that our taxes are wrong and the, the book's wrong. So your ending balance is wrong. Your statement balance is wrong as compared to um, the book. It's not that your transactions are wrong. In real life, what would happen is a transaction would be wrong, right? Or the bank statement itself would be wrong. But in, in our case, our taxes were wrong. So we didn't really deposit what we said we did deposited. So our bank statement isn't necessarily right. So when your bank statement is not right, you adjust it by doing this. But most of the time, you have one of these transactions that are wrong in real life. In real life, you'll have transactions that are wrong that you need to go back and fix. We know it's not our transactions because we know that it's caused by the tax difference. So I went ahead and adjusted it. I'm, out, I'm balancing now, and I can click Finish Now, and it'll reconcile. Now, I know some of you did it this way. I know some of you guys just added an extra expense or a deposit to make it all balance. And if at the end of the day, your accounts are only off by $100, um, I have no concern with that. I mean, we're talking about $300,000, $400,000, and it's off by 100 That's de minimis in anybody's eyes. De minimis, de minimis means that it's so small that it's not worth worrying about. It's not material. All right, so that's how you reconcile. It says print and submit the reconciliation report but we know we don't do that we submit our trial balances so we are good to go to reports and uh, trial balance case three i'm going to export to pdf saves pdf there it is i'm going to exit that i'm going to go back to my report list i'm going to do my transaction detail account case three and I'm going to export PDF, save as PDF, and there we go. So this is our transaction detail by account. This is page one of four. Make sure you pause it if you need to look at it anymore. Page two and three, pause it if you have questions. And then the last page, payroll expense. All right. There's your transaction detail by account. This is your trial balance. It's a two pager. This is page one. Page two, 326, 859, 84. Your total should be somewhere around there. All right, guys, that concludes uh, chapter eight, case three. <clears throat> we'll start chapter nine next week.